This is the Daily Dynamite uh, Youth Devotional Manual, Church of Nigeria Youth Devotional Manual. How is your day? How was your night? Believe that it's so wonderful. Thank God. Let us pray. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for yesterday night. Thank you for waking us up healthy and sound this morning. Lord, we pray that you release the light upon your word. Father, may your word carry life this morning. And may it bring transformation into our lives. Thank you, gracious Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Our text this morning is Psalm 61. Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. In despair and fear from home, I call to you. Take me to a safe refuge, for you are my protector, my strong defense against my enemies. Let me live in your sanctuary all my life. Let me find safety under your wings. You have heard my promises, O oh God, and you have given me what belongs to those who honor you. Add many years to the king's life. Let him live on and on. May he rule forever in your presence, O oh God. Protect him with your constant love and faithfulness. So I will always sing praises to you as I offer you daily what I have promised. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. His, today's topic is His Tabernacle, Your Abode. His Tabernacle, Your Abode. The anchor verse is, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Let me live in your sanctuary all my life. Let me find safety under your wings. This week, to, this, because the week is so fresh, this week you will find safety under, under God's wings in the name of Jesus Christ. As you go out this week, the Lord will shield you with, your, with his wings and you will find safety there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. A tabernacle is a portable earthly dwelling place of Yahweh used by the Israelites from the Exodus until the conquest of Canaan. Moses was instructed at Mount Sinai to construct and transport the tabernacle with the Israelites until they arrived in the promised land. Solomon's temples Temple later superseded, superseded Jerusalem as the dwelling place of God. Today, in the New Testament, it is called church. We are Christian gather to worship to worship. The truth is that we cannot grow in knowledge of God if we are not committed to the meeting together of the fellow believers like us. The tabernacle, as we read in our commentary, is a portable earthly dwelling place of Yahweh. No, the, the ark of God, moving presence of God. And those days in Israelite, after the construction, the, the, the Levites will be carrying it around and they, until they arrived at the promised land. And after that, Moses, uh, Solomon, built a temple for God with letter supersedes the tabernacle. And uh, it, it, it becomes a dwelling place of God where the presence of God is being made manifest. Where you see the glory of God. But today in the New Testament and in the New Covenant and uh, after the death of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, you no. Know, we have church today. We have church today. 
we have the presence of God. We sit down together, call down the presence of God, and the presence of God manifests, and uh, we teach by the inspiration of God, and we sing and dance, and the glory of God will come, and uh, the, 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 the hand of God also come, and we enjoy it. So, now, I want to tell you, if you are part of those who said that God knows church goers or Christians, that there is no need of going to church, that church is in your heart, I want to tell you, you are deceiving yourself. In our part of this country, in a part of in a part of this country, there are people who say na okadinobi. That means uh, uh, church is in the heart. That chuku uh, mandoka. That God knows who are Christians. No, if you are part of those who say that that church is in the heart, or that some people were just like following uh, uh, on streamlining, yet yeah, there are churches around them, even their own denomination around them yet they prefer staying at home watching the the, the church on live, live stream or whatever but i want to tell you you are deceiving yourself you don't know what you are doing because your growth will not be as rapid as it's supposed to grow as you're supposed to grow so we cannot grow in our knowledge of god if we are not committed to the meeting together of fellow believers like us. Bible says that iron sharpens uh, iron. There's no way you can grow. There's no way you can grow if you are not fellowshipping with brethren. When we talk about fellowshipping, I want to tell you that it's not just reading your Bible. You, your quiet time is okay. Your time, making out quality time for reading your Bible at home praying for hours at home you know communion with holy spirit at home yes privately is good but there are more to it when you fellowship with brethren there are inspiration you get more there are things the spirit of god will tell you even while you fellowship with brethren there are things there are prophecy there are things information you will not assess. There are some realms you will not assess if you abstain yourself from the fellowship of the believers. Even when Jesus, he is God and is man, he didn't, he always, you always find Jesus in the temple interacting, touch, uh, chatting, asking questions, answering questions in the tabernacle. In the temple, you always see him there. Anywhere he goes, you look at even Paul the Apostle. Even Paul the Apostle, wherever he goes for his, uh, 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 for his mission, first of all, he will locate the synagogue where the Jews are meeting. So there are some realms you will not reach except you have fellowship with the brethren. The psalmist the king David declared he would abide in God's tabernacle forever. Psalm 1 to 1 says, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. He said, And I shall dwell in the house of God forever. Forever. So he says, and he says, where we read, he said that I would he would abide in God's tabernacle forever. Despite his engagement and busy schedule, he made it a habit to go to the house of God, to commune with God and fellowship with other God's people. Now, the problem we have these days is that many people are busy with their own business and they, they forget to fellowship with brethren. You see a brother, a brother, uh, 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 he, he is uh, as, a, as, as a brother starting up business or in secondary school very zealous always in the church always in the fellowship you see him around brethren uh, always always but maybe he gained that mission he now know that that's, he has a tight schedule 
God bless him as a brother. He maybe he got he, he get a job in a, in a big company. He will now not have time for the fellowship of the brethren. I want to tell you, no matter who you are, no matter the level you find yourself in this life, make sure you make out time to have fellowship with God. I know one man, a very great man in this city where we live, in this part of the world. And this man is a Christian. And people testify he's a Christian. But out of his busy schedule as a big man, no matter what you are doing, when the time of his fellowship, the time of fellowship come, he will just discharge everybody and will go to fellowship. He will sit down, eh, listen to the word of God, interact with people, be free with people in God's presence. Let me tell you, don't joke being in God's presence. Don't joke being in God's presence because make God's tabernacle your abode, making a place where you always be. You can never be in God's presence and they remain the same. Go back the same. No, 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 it's not possible. So, please, make it a point of duty. Despite your engagement, create time for God. Create time for God. Create time for fellowship, fellowshipping with other brethren. This, ab this habit of David is a challenge to an average young person today who prefers streaming online or getting engaged with other things than going to church, even on Sundays. You know, some people are too busy at home that they will prefer uh, uh, watching the service with their phone or on internet. But sometimes... It's not all that good. Great time for Jesus. Great time for fellowship. Even on Sundays. At least on Sundays. Make sure you are in the church. We must note that nothing can replace the physical gathering of the brethren. Nothing can replace it. No matter how, nothing can replace it. Food for thought. Being far from church can never bring us close to God. Being far from church can never bring us close to God. Let us pray. Lord, please give me the same love for your house and the brethren as King David had. Lord, may you activate that love for your house. May you activate that love for your presence, for your people who are listening and watching me this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. David says, I was glad when I hear, let us go to the house of God. Father, let that gladness be activated in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Remember, bless. May today be blessed for you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I hope you are blessed by the word. Join us tomorrow on the Daily Dynamite.